It's a beautiful day outside, and your friends are at the park. It looks like they're having a great time there. You want to go join them by biking there. Wait, wait, Johnny. Before you get on, let's check your helmet. For bicyclists of all age, a properly put on and properly fitted helmet can be your best protection against head injury in the event of a fall or accident. Wearing a helmet makes sense in all conditions. So how do you put it on correctly? Well, first, put it on the right way, and it should sit low and level on your forehead, about the width of two fingers above your eyebrows. Center the buckle under your chin. It's too tight, isn't it? Yeah, well, tighten the chin strap as necessary to achieve a comfortable, secure fit. Adjust side straps so they form a V-shape on each side, below and just in front of your ears. Most adjustments to the side straps can be made easily by taking the helmet off first. When adjusted, do the eyes, ears, and mouth test to check for a good fit. Eyes. You should see the very edge of your helmet when you look up past your eyebrows. Ears. The strap should meet right under your earlobes to form a Y. Mouth. The strap should be loose enough so you can breathe and insert a finger between the buckle and your skin, but tight enough that if you drop your jaw, as in a yawn, you can feel the helmet pull down on the top of your head. Now that we're done checking your helmet, let's check your bike with the ABCs. Do you know what the ABCs stand for? A stands for air. You shouldn't be able to push the wheel more than a center meter in. Good. B stands for brakes. Does your bike stop when you press the brakes? Great. C stands for chain. Does it run smoothly? Why, yes, it sounds like it does. So you are now ready to go on the road. If it was at night, make sure to have lights. We do these checks so we are as safe as we can be. Remember, when you're on the road, you're considered a vehicle. You have the same rights and responsibility as another vehicle. For example, there's a stop sign ahead. Johnny, you'll have to stop for it. But how do bicyclists show it when they don't have blinkers? Very good, Johnny. Good thing you stopped th there, Johnny. You might have run into that car and gotten very hurt. Remember, as bicyclists, you're expected to observe stop signs, red lights, one-way streets, yield right-of-way, signal turns, and in general, obey the same rules of the road motorists follow. You've shown us how to stop. Now you want to turn right. How would you signal that? Very good. Or you could have signaled like this. Nice. Now you want to turn left. How would you show that? Good job. We signal to show our intentions. So if we ever have to stop, turn left, or turn right, signal. Look out! There's a hula hooper. She doesn't see you coming. What will you do, Johnny? Very good. See what Johnny did? He ducked his head and turned so he wouldn't swerve into traffic until he knew there were no cars. This is something you can do before swerving around any obstacle. But if you see a car, bus, truck, or any motor vehicle, signal and stop. Now wait, Johnny. Why are you going on the sidewalk? You know that you're safer on the road because you're a more visible car and many accidents happen when cars don't see bicyclists. Plus, you've got the same rights as a motor vehicle and take the whole lane if you need to, and drivers are required to give you at least three feet of clearance when passing you. Remember, Johnny. So get back on the road, Johnny. All right, you've arrived at the park now, Johnny, safe and sound. You checked your bike before you left, you signal when you wanted to stop or turn, and you check traffic before avoiding them. You kept in mind that bikes and motor vehicles both have the right to be on the roads, and it is up to you to make sharing the road as pleasant as possible.
Above all, you remember to bike as predictably as possible and to bike assuming that the drivers were idiots. Your friends are probably waiting for you. Off you go.